parade of dashing one more year. Hope everyone had a great Monday. Uh, hopefully it was a uh, profitable day for all the dashers. Um, normally it varies in our market where it's, you know, busy or not. Or uh, completely dead. <laughs> well, um, I actually did a dash along the way. I was, I was scheduled to... Uh, Start, I think, at about 5 o'clock, 5.30, something like that. And... Let's turn the GPS off. And, um... Anyway, I, uh... Came out. I was looking at everything and went, Oh, it's ripping red now in, in Lee Summit. So I'll do a dash along the way. So that's what I did. Ended up doing a dash along the way, took a picture of the clocks, um, and um, switched all the uh, mileage apps on, etc. And was just... Hmm. Anyway, um, guess I forgot to put it in park. I just left it in neutral. Anyhow... Um, so yeah, did a dash along the way, nothing came in, anything close or between between us, unfortunately. Um, wasn't until a couple of uh, dark, uh, silly offers came in, but that's usual, isn't it? I was going to go get the... Uh, I thought about doing, doing the van first and getting that clean, but... Um, and then going off to uh, go get something to eat because most of the time it's, it's pretty quiet earlier on in that part of the afternoon or anything of anything um, profitable to come in. So, um, anyhow, I was heading down 291 and um, this offer came in and it was. It was a catering offer for uh, the mint. Went, looked at that and went, yeah, sure. <laughs> so I was able just to go in there. I mean, we were about to go past it anyway. So, uh, yeah, I was able to go straight in there and had to wait. When I got there, I had to wait a little bit. Um, they were still putting it together in it. It was a catering order, but it, it, it actually... Uh, fit it all in the uh the, the door dash bag so like the little zipper one the ones that fall apart <laughs> well at least the zipper fall it breaks but anyway uh so i was able to get all that get that sorted in it was going a fair ways it was paying i think like 23 dollars and some change and um but it was going 12 miles 12 and a half miles and I went, yeah, I'll take that. It was early evening. It was out to the country somewhere. And, uh, yeah, took that out there. I hadn't been out to that house before. Um, it was uh, off a back road. Oh. But anyway, got up there and then it was like, well, which is the bloody front door of this house? And I, sort of, I just went to the first one I saw. And uh, pops it on there. You'll see a picture. I'll put it up here somewhere. And um, yeah, just went with that. Anyhow, picture at the beginning of this this video. I'm going to put that picture up there. An old Austin, uh, old uh, mini. Um. At the, at the beginning, I'm just going to put the picture on there. Uh, there's an, another picture or two a bit later on in the video. No, actually, I'll put it up here too. But um, it uh, we were somewhere in um, Lee Summit, done a uh, delivery somewhere, and was heading back from it. And this. As we were passing the petrol station, I, I looked over and I went, whoa. <laughs> and 
and I was over in over <laughs> I was over a couple of lanes, but then I was there was no one there. I just drifted over to where I wanted to be and pulled into the petrol station right beside this flipping thing, this uh, little vehicle, <laughs> tiny vehicle. And as I'm like, the bloke's just got out of it, and um, I uh, pulled up alongside of him, and I went, I ain't seen one of those for a long time, mate. Definitely used to seeing a few of those. And he went, I bet you are. <laughs> Anyway, he was an American bloke. Anyway, so I pulled up along. I said, can I take a picture? Said, yeah, sure. So uh, I pulled up and the petrol pumps the other side of it and um, got out and had a chat. His wife, I guess it was, that was in, in the passenger seat. And it had the steering wheel on the correct side of the vipping dash too. Put over there. <laughs> Proper side. And... Um, So I was looking all over it and I was telling them about about that I had the old London taxi before and um, that someone, we were doing an event somewhere at the, down the road in Independence actually, several years ago now and uh, when I had the cab and uh, this couple turned in, didn't know them who they were at all and they just, uh, they were just passing. It was a British event that I was doing. It was a uh, car boot sale, I think, I was doing it. And we had a few British cars there, and, of course, the taxis there, too. And um, so, anyway, they pulled in, and they had an old Mini, too. Actually, I'll put it up there, too. And um, it was the old mustard yellow Mini. And they were just happened to be passing. So, um... And they had this little uh, dog, I think it was a pug dog, if I remember right, by the name of Bentley. And like I told this couple, I said, we, we got the, uh, they put their dog in front, tied him to the front of their car, their mini, and we parked him side by side with the, with the taxi. And Bentley was towing the mini. That's what it was supposed to be. So, yeah, that's up here. He was a nice dog too. But anyway, yeah. So anyway, this this couple they um w that I saw with the the red mini, um, they said, "Oh, you just missed out." He said, "There was another one here with us." Oh, and oh crap! Anyway, they taken a picture, so they showed me the picture. Oh, neat. But uh, apparently, it's uh, he said to me, "Oh, it's not mine." I am mate, flipping hell. You picked the wrong car to steal. <laughs> You're not going to be doing the Italian job in this car, <laughs> really. <laughs> you might get a bit noticed in the in Lee Summit, especially that bloody great graphic on the roof, bright red with the Vipin Union Jack. Now you haven't picked the right car to steal. <laughs> he says no. He says no. It's a friend of mine's car. He said uh, he's. He collects old English Brit uh, British sports cars. Well, really, does it now? <laughs> and uh, he said he didn't want to use those as daily drivers, so he, he went over to England and bought bought the Mini. So he bought the Mini and uses that. First time I've seen that running around, but bloody hell, it was it was quite quite fun to see that. Quite nice. Although on the boot of that car is quite. I was looking at the pictures, which I didn't notice at, at the beginning when I was there, but but I looked on, when I was looking at the pictures of it, I saw the little, the uh, the emblem across the back where it calls it a Mini Cooper. No, it's not a Mini Cooper. It's not a Cooper S in, by any shape or form. If it was a proper Cooper, it would have twin flipping tanks on it, and that one didn't. Twin petrol tanks, it is. But it was a nice car regardless. Very nice car. Very well looked after for sure. So we'll see what happens to uh, meeting up with his uh, friend who's got all the cars. I'd definitely love to see all of those. But yeah, that was uh, a very chance uh, chance time of us being over there. Just, uh, that was good.
Unfortunately, missed the other one, but at least I got to see that one. And he couldn't miss it for sure. But, um, and I think those Vipin Minis too, like the older, older Minis, they were, they're actually a lot better than the Vipin new ones. The BMW, as soon as BMW's got a hold of it and, and started messing about doing their own bloody design, it's an okay looking car, like the BMW one, and I know it's built in the old factory too, but, it's not a brilliant car. <laughs> it's not. Um, it's not built to last at all. This little vipping old mini that was on here, what's it got? A bloody uh, 1200, 1100cc engine in it. I mean, hell. <laughs> Might even be the 900 one for 1000cc. Um, and here it is still running around. Yeah. Well, that one's had an easy life, no doubt. It's got a uh, being well looked after, but um, but there's still quite a few of them are running around, and their engine was used in a lot of car, a lot of old vehicles too. And I liked it, like it is uh, comparing it to the new Mini. There's too much crap in it, basically. And the new Mini is it, it's. It may be a bigger vehicle, but it's just too much bulky stuff. It's, you've got all the dash in it. Yeah, I know it's got our bloody airbags and such in there. But you've got the center consoles big in it. You've got all the bloody switches that don't appear to be... that are in odd places. Why you've got the bloody electric windows in the middle down there is beyond me. Well, Jeeps do the same for some stupid reason. Oh, no, I know why Jeeps do it. Because you can take the bloody doors off. Anyway, um... But, no, it's, uh... I like, I like the older ones. A lot easier to get in and out of. And, yeah, they don't have a lot of power like the, like the new ones. But, but the new ones keep flipping braking anyway. Too much electronic crap on it. <laughs> but, um... But yeah, anyway, saw that, was very happy, um, certainly brought a, a memory or two of back home. And uh, yeah, they were really nice people too, they were, uh, I'm sure they, they used to being, being stopped in the street, vipping, of people wanting to look at it. I got very used to it when I had the old London taxi, that was for sure. I had never used to lock that old taxi. No one was going to, if anyone was going to steal it, they weren't going to get far with it. I mean, you could have put, I could have put a bloody sail on the roof and put it in a 110 fipping uh, uh, hill and I could, still could have been caught up with a bastard. <laughs> it was, it was not a very quick vehicle, to say the least. It was, uh, the engine in it was severely underpowered for the, uh, for the bodywork that it was pulling severely underpowered and it was a Ford Mustang engine too whoever thought of putting that in there were a flipping clown but anyway um yeah so door dashing went off and delivered that one that uh picked up that catering offer first of all and uh went off and delivered that um out in the country somewhere and um left that and didn't see anyone turn around and pulled out of there I was on the way back and um ended up going to get something to eat i think after that and then went back out again there oh that's right while i was over at um we'd eaten at perkins came out of there and um this offer came in while i was messing around putting things back um, putting everything back on, and uh, it was it wasn't going far. I think it was like three miles away, and um, it was from Perkins, and it was paying like six fifty. I believe that's what it was, and uh, I went yeah sure I'll take that. So I went in, and the bloke says, 
funny, I thought I just saw you. I said, yeah. I said, I didn't get enough of seeing you all, so I came back. He says, yeah, I understand. <laughs> so anyway, um, got that food. I mean, it was, I don't know what was in it. It was very, very small. Why they didn't tie the bags up to seal the bags, I don't know. But anyway, so um, went up to this, delivered this, that one, and it was uh, going to a cul-de-sac. And when I got in there, in the cul-de-sac, it was, it was dark. <laughs> uh, and the people that I was delivering to, oh, some idiot with their radio. Um, people that I was delivering to were, um, they didn't have a porch light on. They are great. And I wasn't sure which bloody house it was. I, I had, I pulled out the torch. I've got the headlights on on the house that I pulled up in the driveway because I decided just to pull up in some random person's driveway. And I was like searching on on the house tr with the torch, trying to figure out where the bloody hell's the number on this house. And I've already looked at the one that I'm that it was actually going to, and I went, "There's no bloody number on that one. Where the hell is it?" How the hell are you supposed to find this flipping house? Anyhow, I ended up calling the woman. I rang her up and I started to ask for her name. Um, asked if it, if it was her rather. And then I said, this is Ray, your DoorDash driver. I'm uh, currently trying to figure out which house is yours. <laughs> um, and she went, she says, oh, where are you? I said, well, someone's driveway in your road. <laughs> and I said, I don't know if it's your or your neighbours. <coughs> and I tried counting the houses on the way in, but there was one that was on the corner and there was one a little bit further back and then another one here and then another. It was very odd. And it was also very bloody dark out there. I mean... I, don't even think there was a bloody light in that cul de sac, except the headlights. <laughs> and at that time, they were looking at someone else's, someone's uh, garage, which wasn't hers. Because <laughs> she says, Oh, let me have a look. I'll just stick my head out the door. And I went, Oh, you that one. <laughs> and oh, <"I'll> there you are. <laughs> so then I walked some through the cars to get up to her. She had several vehicles on her drive. And I walked around and then I, like, I didn't fall down, but I dropped down into what I think might have been their garden, part of, part of their, their flower flower arrangements. And she says, oh, I should have put the light on, shouldn't I? I said, that would have helped. <laughs> <coughs> Still got a bloody cough. And, um... So I ended, I got up the steps and handed it to her and I noticed that she had a couple of little doggies in there. I said, oh, they're waiting for their dinner. <laughs> she turned around, yeah, there you are. <laughs> and uh, yeah, gave her that and I went, thank you very much. And off it went. I went back, found found the vehicle again. And um, on the way, I can't remember where I went after that. I don't know if it was the Shake Shack or what, what I went to after that. Um, I think it was. I think I went to Shake Shack after that. And um, I didn't do bloody many. I should be able to remember them. But I'll put them all along here where I went. But And I might be talking about a di totally different one by, by the time I'm, the graphic comes up or the picture comes up. But I did... Um, one from Shake Shack. So I go down, it's paying like 11.50, I think it was. And it wasn't going all that far. It was just going up to, uh, um, off of Col Colburn Road. And, um, so I look, when we got down there, there was complete flipping pandemonium. I mean, there's roadworks on the way down there. Because when I was going down, going down, um, 
Bloody hell, what road was on? Chipman Road. Going down Chipman Road, I was coming up, coming towards uh, Dutch Brothers was coming up on the right-hand side. And I'm looking at the phone trying to figure out, yeah, sure, I'll take that. And then I went, went as I looked up, I went, <laughs> and there's, um, there's roadworks going on, right? And there's normally a lane there and a lane over here. And then a lane to turn right, uh, left rather, excuse me, and then a lane to turn right. Well, all of a sudden, there's this bloody bunch of um, uh, cones and a sign in it telling to go which, you know, one of those uh, uh, lighted up signs flashing to tell you which way to go. Well, bloody bollocks, I did not see that. And I had a sudden great fan in front of me that I couldn't see around anyway. So, anyway, it ended up turning right down Fipping um, Ward Road. Ended up doing a U-turn coming out of there. There's Fipping more bloody cones all of a sudden in the road. Oh, crying out loud. What happened over the day? And then um, came out of there, went back down uh, Chipman Road. They blocked off yet another lane. And uh, then you could move into it because there was a great big digger thing digging an hole. What is it? Some blokes just want to bloody dig holes in the middle of nowhere. I don't know why. Anyhow, no one was there doing anything. So I carry on down Chipman under the Vipping uh, 350 highway and um, still heading towards um, Shake Shack. And then it became apparent that there was more bloody road work. So, oh, my fucking hell. hell. Uh, what a pain in the rear end it was. Why do they do that? They just, they're not, they're not satisfied with doing things on one road at a time. One area at a time. Now they've been ripped up another Another bloody, uh, another road and made it another major road too. Oh, it's just absolute bloody nightmare. I mean, once you figure it out that, okay, you can get out how to get around it, then yeah, but all of a sudden it's there and it's dark and... Like, what in the hell has happened? <laughs> All of a sudden, the area just grew cones and barriers. We watched one truck come out of one road and it wanted to go. F there was barriers right away across the road. You cannot go down that part of the road. Well, this truck pulled out from the shopping centre opposite, opposite Shake Shack, insisted on turning left. I mean, you can't, when you go into that lane, there's three barriers across the road. You cannot go around them. You cannot go through them. But he wanted to go around them. He went up the curb to try and get around them. And then ended up backing back off of it. And um, turning around and going the other way. But... Um, yeah, say, say the least that it's in, inconvenient. As, uh, yeah. Hopefully they won't be at that, that section for too long. Like, hopefully it's done tomorrow. But anyway, went into Shake Shack. Uh, food was on, on, the, uh, on the shelf. And uh, got back in. It had a milkshake with it. And uh, what did I do? I uh, took that up to the customer, and it was heading into uh, Fleming Park, where they got all the uh, the bison and that, and the elks and such, and lots of deers running free. But anyway, I uh, got up to this house. We've been to this house before, and as I pulled in there, um, the bloke was coming out of his garage, I suppose. 
and uh, it's on a corner. It's a bit of an oddly sh odd, odd way that it's laid out in a way. But um, and his dogs start barking and going crazy. So anyway, I pulls up and he's walking up towards the, the car anyway. And uh, I then the dogs are just going crazy. So I said they're just fifteen, probably bloody uh, softies, big softies, aren't they? Really? He said, yeah. <laughs> I said, because they're barking, but they ain't, they ain't a menacing bark. Plus, their retrievers crying out loud. <laughs> Who's ever seen a flipping, uh, mad flipping retriever to try and uh, eat you? All they want to do is lick you, the food. <laughs> but anyway, um, he said, oh, there's an invisible fence. I said I probably still won't be able to step over it, but anyway. <laughs> it's, uh, um, but anyway, gave me his food, gave me his milkshake. He's like, oh, thanks very much. That's all right. It's on your list, isn't it? Uh, anyway, um, gave him all of that and backed off of there and ended up going around the front of his house on his big loopy driveway and uh, got out. But no, he was... Uh, we didn't do too many jobs. I know that I went to Sklosky's at one stage. Um, again, I would have put everything up here. Um, but no, I haven't. Um, but it was still okay. I mean, it was okay. I, it wasn't... Um, a great night. I mean, it wasn't like we'd been working last night or sat Friday or Saturday. But um, but yeah, it was fairly decent for a for a Monday. I mean, it was uh, some definite flipping uh, ridiculous offers coming through, but just uh, didn't bother. Just kept it in decline. I did get my acceptance rate back. Uh, not my yeah, my acceptance rate is maybe at seventeen percent now. It was actually higher, but during the night we got kicked off a couple of times because. DoorDash only wanted to uh, keep us on an hour at a time for a few hours. Um, and then um, my completion rate is back up again. It went really right the way down a few over the last week or so. It's gone right the way down. And uh, it's now at 99% already, which it says on there, um, and I'll put it up here somewhere. Um, it goes up, it's, it's worked out over the last hundred, hundred orders. Well, I haven't done a bloody hundred orders, I'm sure, but anyway, all right, <laughs> it's gone up. So it's up there, up there now. But no, uh, I don't believe there was any, uh, craziness tonight. I tried to do a video of the house on Douglas that has the real nice, uh, um, um, Halloween display, I mean, they go all out, and uh, I've done one side of it, and then I tried to do the other, but then a, an offer came in, or was there a car behind, no, it was a car behind this night, if you can move on, and uh, and then by the time I came back, a bit later on, after I've done a delivery, and I guess they must turn their lights out at 10 o'clock, no, no. Well, all the decorations, at least. So I didn't get that one side of it, so I'm going to have to wait till tomorrow now, I suppose. But I'll just, I'll put whatever I put up. I did take and put it up here. Up here somewhere, maybe at the end. But anyway, yeah, I think that'll do it. Um, somewhat short video. <laughs> well, half an hour. It's short for me, as many of you know. Um... No, uh, Mrs. Womble's got dialysis in the morning, so we didn't work too late. It's now oof, it's ten past twelve. Um, but uh, so we wasn't going to work work very late because of that. But we worked some long hours over the weekend too. So she gets a uh, a couple of days off of it. So we're able to. Uh, work for 
work late, which is where I like to be, and there's certainly some uh, times I like to are happier to work. Because uh, you do get some good offers coming through, and you do see some funny things. <sighs> do see some funny things. Plus, you know, you've been... Uh, do it, being a driver at night is a whole lot different than driving during the day. One, there's normally less traffic, which is a definite bonus. One, it gets a bit cooler too, which is definitely a bonus. Although it's going to get cooler during the week, as I understand. So I may not be wearing shorts for too long, but we'll figure that out. Um, and you get some people that are definitely desperate for some uh, food after midnight. Like some food becomes like they pay for it like it's gold dust, and some are just completely crazy and think that they're going to get their deliveries done for two dollars. Mm, no. <sighs> And people seem to be, a lot of people that we uh, see during the night, um, like wait staff, etc., seem to be uh, a bit happier during the night, which is odd, really, but but they, uh, it's a little bit easier on them, or it's the end of the day for them, because, well, they're getting ready to go home, and uh, all the hassle and the stress is just been gone now. <laughs> They've done their work for the day and they're just looking forward to going home. Or, like, for the bloke at McDonald's who's been on the drive through in Blue Springs, seems to be very happy to be working at night. And uh, if there's a long line and we're stuck outside the window, we get to chat with him <laughs> for a little bit. Or oh, whoever's there. But, um, but, yeah, last night, Sunday night, <laughs> Sunday night, well, Sunday night, Monday morning. Yeah, Monday morning, it would have been early hours. I didn't mention this last night, I'm not even sure I put the picture up here. But, <sighs> go to, got dispatched to go to uh, the Taco Bell in Blue Springs. One on Mock Avenue, or Coronado, it is by then. And um, go in there, looked at who I'm picking up for, douche, right, douche, douche, douche. I move up to uh, the speaker thing, and there's a car in front. Okay, so I'm waiting on the car in front. Du, du, du. What the bloody hell are they doing? Every now and again, you can see, hear someone go, hello. Finally, the car in front decides to move on. And the car is... A couple of cars... One or two cars come behind me while I'm sat there. Anyhow, so I move up. And Mrs. Womble, she says, What are they doing then? She says, Maybe they need to uh, blast the horns to give them... Uh, to uh, let them know that they're there. Anyhow, so I get to the speaker box after that car moved on. And, um, oh, it, I, uh, no one, I, I sit there for a few minutes. Nothing. All right, sorry, I'm going to the window. I'm not having none of this. I go up to the window, and as I approach the window, I made sure that someone knew that we were there. <laughs> and... I blasted the uters on this, and crikey, I didn't realise they were that loud. <laughs> Especially because you're in the drive through and it echoes off the building, right? So, oh, blimey. Did not realise they were that loud on <laughs> this one. Oof. Anyway, because I'm approaching the window and I've blasted the uters, there's someone in the window, and they've obviously... <laughs> they were obviously uh, startled by the hooters too. <laughs> and, uh, 
You can see her jump. Oh, God, that was so funny. I wish I had that on video. I don't think it... No, it wouldn't have picked it up on that. But anyway, uh... And then she's frantically tapping on the window because, well, I've pissed her off now. Never mind. And the, all she's doing is pointing towards the window. There's a sign on the window that they've closed at 1.30 due to staff shortages. What do you mean? How many cars are out there, outside there? There's various vehicles outside. Was it four vehicles out there um, that were parked up? That was obviously staff people because, well, there's no customers in there. And you don't think that the place can be run by four people? Holy crap. I've been at the Sonic place in the morning right next door to them. And there's only been one bloke in there, and he's been and flipping done everything. He's put the food in there, done all what he's had to do, and he's run around doing it all before everybody else gets there. Um, and actually, he wasn't the only one. I was done in there again, and there was a lady in there done exactly the same. It's just one that, you know, they can handle it. And they had more flipping traffic going through there that, that morning, or those mornings that I went there. Um, and I only went there early in the morning because at that time it was when, um, my wife was in, um, the rehab centre down the road because when she broke her arm, they were trying to, uh, uh, get it to work properly and that or such. So, anyway, I'd fallen asleep out there, up there overnight and come out early in the morning and gone to Sonic for some reason. Anyway, um, so anyway, back at Taco Bell, they just closed at it closed at one thirty, and they've got this mesh uh, picture of a uh, printed up thing, paper stuck on on the window. And what was it? Uh, all door dashes. An online order, Uber Eats and online, other online orders are to be refunded. Call Fipping 800 uh, SOS Tacos. Well, that sounded kind of Fipping uh, made up, so I called it. It's not, <laughs> I called it, it's not Fipping made up. But it just makes me laugh that they just bloody close these places. And I texted the lady about that one. Um, and said they're refusing to make your order. Well, we, really, they were. And I said, I'm on the DoorDash now. I'm trying to figure that out. Well, DoorDash support was absolute. And um, I don't know what was happening with that. In the end, I just reverted going back to re saying that the, the restaurant was closed. So I did that took a picture of, I had to go round again take a picture of that um, that sign in the window and uh, it came up said verified and it paid me for, being, for doing it but while I was there I just just uh, I just reported that one closed and it must have been about three or four seconds later, another one came in for the same restaurant. I could just bloody well reported it closed. You wanted me to take a picture, so you knew that it was closed before. Anyway, um, so I went, okay, accepted. <laughs> and I took a picture. I went, dush, and it gave me, gave me another one. I went... And then it came through as another one, and I went, no, I just decline it. I'm not going to do this. I see something's just not right on the system. I could just sit, could have sat there for a little while taking bloody pictures of that same bloody sign. I mean, I'm sure DoorDash wouldn't have been, would have liked it, but, you know, if your system's out for being antiquated, then you bloody well, uh, it would have figured it out in the first place. Anyhow, funny thing was, is that, okay, one of the people that I had, uh, the last one, that uh, declined, the bloke's name is Trevor, I think, and, um, and said, 
I didn't decline, excuse me, I'd written that um, the, the restaurant was closed and took that picture. Well, then I was heading down towards um, McDonald's, just down the way from um, uh, Taco Bell, and an offer comes in, and it was for that bloke, so he obviously found, he was offering, obviously desperate for some food as he ordered 40, 40 piece McNuggets. Wow, he was hungry. Anyway, um, but yeah, just pees me off why they do that. And I'm sure that there was more than enough people in there to flip in, uh, stay there for half an hour to do, uh, do the food. Maybe they, I don't know, I don't know what they've done. There's a bloke there that's normally there, and they're very good. Bloke and a the lady there that are really good, and this lot, no. <laughs> Anyhow, that's enough for me, I think. Flipping up here. And, um, yeah, that'll do it. I'll be back on tomorrow, or I'll be back out working tomorrow. I've got to take some pictures of the... Uh, the bags, the the uh, insulated bags for another app that I've joined. I forgot to do it over the weekend. Well, every time I thought about it, it was too dark or whatever. And uh, so I'll do that tomorrow. And a couple other things that I've got to do. But I'll be out. I'll be out again. Tuesday night. I don't know how busy it'll be. I'll be going to a different restaurant tomorrow. Mrs. Womble has decided that we need to go to this one place to try at last. And after seeing pictures, I'm quite keen to do so. But, um, so we go try it out. And I'll let you know more from that. Anyhow, I hope everyone has a great Tuesday. Um, hope you all have a laugh doing it. You've got to get a laugh out of you've been doing the job at times. Just drive your crackers otherwise. And, uh, yeah, just have fun and be safe. Hopefully it's stress-free and you make loads of money. Or at least enough to you can pay for your time being out. And don't forget, don't take those low-ball offers. Complete load of shite. You'll never earn any money and you'll just ruin your car with it. All right, anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers. Ta-da. The scary house. Thank you.